When Silent Spring was first published, Rachel Carson faced attacks from the food industry in America and its allies. In the 1990s and onwards, this continued by corporate and other advocates opposed to government, quote, interference in the so-called free market. The main causes of loss of bird life are not attributable to personal choices. The number one reason for the loss of bird life in the United States and elsewhere according to the UN Environment Program, the Intergovernmental Panel on Biodiversity, the US Fish and Wildlife Service, and many other sources is habitat destruction. Two other additional important sources of mortality are pesticides, mostly used in commercial agriculture, again, not private home use. In other words, most bird death is not caused by things that ordinary people do in their daily lives, but by industrial and commercial activity. is in fact a kind of increasing the sophisticated strategy on the part of lobbies. So first they, invite, they try to falsify the test or the methodology, then the legitimacy of the organization doing the test, and then finally more uh, broad, like to create a world view where the idea of regulation becomes a hindrance, something we don't need because market after all can take care of it. So what I'm talking about at the end of the day is something like cognitive capture. So we see uh, since uh, Silent Spring, we, th we have faced 60 years of what we call regrettable substitution or the law of conservation of misery. And it means that toxicity ex is extreme. If you look at uh, DDT, you need uh, about uh, 27,000 nanograms to kill a honeybee. And with the Neonix, you need only 3.7. So they are 7,000 times more potent in uh, killing insects. So if we look at historic errors, we see that the, uh, the authorization is deeply flawed. The, the regulatory science process is not functioning well. And there was now also a committee in the European Parliament, the Pest Committee, that uh, has concluded uh, the same errors after many uh, hearings. So we have uh, a couple of challenges here. Too little, a large scale use and pollution continues. Too late, much of the damage is already done. We lost a lot of bees. Uh, there is tremendous damage to the environment. Uh, we need to reduce these delays between early warning and action, and we need to stop regrettable substitution. There is a, a constant will by the industry to capture the standards and the protocols and to establish uh, its own uh, levels of certainty, uh, threshold, and so on. The, the, the risk assessment for regulatory purposes is understood by many people, I would say most of the people, as the science and the consensus on a specific uh, subject. Uh, and I would say that in, in recent years, many people, many science communicators, many journalists, maybe uh, many policymakers and so on, they were fooled a few years ago by the, the false controversy over climate change. And all these people who are very important to convince, uh, they are eagerly waiting for something that resembles a, a scientific consensus on each complicated subject, such as the impact of pesticides on the environment and human health. And I see more and more, and that's why what we are talking about guardians of reason, because more and more people in the public debate tend to think that these regulatory assessments are a form of scientific consensus, and we understand it's not the case at all. Then we also need to pay attention to flows of information, fences against critical knowledge and new scientific approaches, and what I call pre-lobbying. From the 1920s onwards, the pesticide companies were the major suppliers of information about their products and their use. This material was pushed through educational institutions in agriculture. Every school handed out the material that the pesticide companies had produced themselves. Of pesticides and how they were pushed onto Norwegian farmers, family gardeners and foresters by corporate interests, state institutions, branch organizations, 
and broad membership associations, both before and after Silent Spring. More on the long term, I would say uh, we should take inspiration from the fossil free politics campaign, also from the UN Tobacco Convention, that basically state, uh, you know, public officials should no longer and politicians should no longer engage on certain topics with uh, lobby lobbyists from certain sectors like the oil industry or the tobacco industry. Why not implement the same uh, for the pesticide and the chemical industry when it comes to reducing the uh, use of these uh, products? So this is a really hard challenge. It is the challenge of our generation and we have to step up to the plate.